Grant Dania now. It's Grant Dania. The gold lady this year. Oh my god, it's Grant Dania. And our mom, Shazzy Dania. She's really crazy. And George, affectionately known as Large Sarge. It's all true. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shazzy Dania. And George. Look, we do call it It's All True, but let's be honest. We also speak a lot of shit on this podcast <laughs> and we make a lot of it up. So I don't know if we kind of, it's like a false flag when we, when we were naming this podcast, It's All True. It was about correcting stories with what was made up in news publications and then just sort of telling you actually how our story uh, but it goes. Still fit. It still fits because even if we talk about aliens or yowies or the black <laughs> panther yeah that just makes it sound so credible well, when we talk about yowies and the panther you know what? we are believers yeah i guess you know what it, this probably the smartest thing we did when we named this podcast was put a question mark at the end of it's all true because <laughs> then right. we, we didn't have to actually commit to being truthful mm. it's sort of it's like our it's our safety net it's our scapegoat that question mark where mm. we don't necessarily always um have to talk about the truth. I love it when people read it out and they say it's all true. True. Yeah. Reminds me of um Ron Burgundy. Yes. With the auto cue. Anchor yes. man. Can tell we're yeah. married. We finished yeah. each other's sentences. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um okay. So we've got a really awesome guest here today. Um not George. George is not with us. He is working, but even better than George. Don't tell him I said that. Um That's right. I will. So I just want to um, give a little bit of background as to how I stumbled upon this fantastic human. So last year when Sunday was in her cast and I was up a lot through the night, I was reading the newspaper and um, always scanning for interesting stories and I came across, across this quite stunning, um, that was the first thing that I noticed, quite a a stunning looking female who had been doing some really fantastic um, resilience type confidence boosting uh, in young girls in various schools around Australia. So I read a little bit about her story and um, the way it was written, I think it was Sophie D'Alessio who um, who interviewed her and I'm super excited to say that finally after an entire year of trying to get her to come on our podcast and then constantly having something that popped up that prevented it, uh, today we have Jacinta um, on the podcast. Give her a big clap, oh, Grant. Sorry. Manly duties. There we go. Yeah, Jacinta Dabowski, come on in. Are you there? Hello, hello, Shazzy and Grant. I am here. I am in in my living room with the biggest presence. That I haven't actually stopped smiling, just even though I can't see you both in real. I wish I could touch you both. That's a bit weird. But um, no, I- <laughs> <laughs> a bit early to be doing that. That's but anyway, okay. welcome. That's okay. We're all good. we're all good with the weird. Um, but, uh, love that. But yeah, seeing you here, I'm I'm stoked. Thank you for the little wrap up and and Sophie did write that story. Yeah, in, in body and soul. Yep. So That's I remember it. I remember reading it and just my heart kind of just really broke for you. So do you want to give us a little bit? Because I don't want to give away too much of your story. I want to hear it in your own words. Um, so what do you do? What was the article about? I guess and and where are you at at the moment? Yeah, so um, thanks. Thanks, Shezzy. I So through, through high school, I'll give you a little bit of a, little bit of a background. I'm, I'm actually six foot two. So I've got mum and dad made me with, um, with some long legs. Right. Humble uh, brag. Quietly. Yeah, <laughs> humble brag. Yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> uh, I'd enjoy giving you a, um, a hug, Grant, don't worry. Um, and I, uh, I actually, through, through high school, uh, and went to a, a, a private Christian school uh, back home in Aubrey Wodonga, where I'm from, country girl, born and raised. Uh, I endured quite a bit of bullying, and my height was was the one that was got slaughtered the most. And even uh, my naturally 
curly hair that I that I have today. And I think, you know, as a, as a teen that really you, you're trying to find yourself, your body's changing, you, you want to be accepted, you just, um, you just want to be liked. And I think when you're told something that's so powerfully uh, demoralising and, and just smashes that self-confidence, it's really, uh, it's really, really damaging. Sadly, the effects then went on uh, into, my, into my early 20s with relationships and things like that. So oh I actually God. went I feel into like so- I could cry already. Sorry. Oh, I don't know why. Going, but... She's gone. <laughs> oh, um, just because I can tell in your voice that it was, you know, that you've overcome a lot. So sorry, I won't interrupt. Yeah, you. it has. No, thank you. So you are, you know, a relationship. So you have boyfriends as a, you know, as a, as a teen and again, you being loved and accepted. And I think just, just choosing the wrong boyfriends that again were, I think, controlling uh was sort of mentally abusive in their own way now I can sort of look back many many years ago going wow actually being spoken to like that being controlled like that not being able to go out of the home Mm. and socialize with friends that's that's actually not okay sadly I accepted that behavior and went actually that's okay you can treat me like crap because I was told back in high school, uh, you're just not good enough. You know, mm. you're a storf, you're a giant, big foot. I've got the ugly, buffy hair. Um, I just want to be accepted. I just want to be uh, loved. So I'm in relationships where I'm allowing you to treat me like crap, mm. sadly. So you can imagine again what that does with the self-esteem building up time and time and time and time and time again, it just, yeah. Slowly degrades, which is a bit, it's actually more common than what you, what you think. And I know that because I've done a lot of research into young girls and confidence, you know, in young girls and, and how it starts and the simple things that can happen, especially in a playground or even in a household that can start to erode that self-esteem. Mm. Um, and you're so beautiful. I think that's what is also so surprising because, you know, you kind of think that the people who are bullied in the playground are, I don't know, have something to be bullied about, don't you think? Yeah, but you, you, you've, you went on to become, you know, a quite a prolific model, right, which took your career to, to some great places. So sort of explain where you ended up and, and, and how far it went. Yeah, so Grant, I did. I I sort of come out of a relationship uh, that was actually sadly a, a relationship with domestic violence. So I'm actually a domestic violence survivor, if, I, if you don't mind me uh, adding that. So I do a fair bit of work around that space as well for uh, survivors and advocacy with that. But uh uh, a lot of a lot of psychological uh, work I did to build myself up and to get myself uh, mentally strong enough in a space to be able to yeah to do some modelling work which was uh, which was just what I loved so uh, Sydney and Melbourne and around the country and Fashion Week and all that sort of thing which was wonderful sort of it was oh it was the be all end all and. I'm a model and how exciting and I get to walk on catwalks and be in magazines and catalogues and things like that. Uh, But I did come across uh, one agency when I was living in Sydney in, in Pitt Street. And one of the first, first tasks I had to do. So moving from Aubrey to Sydney was lose 10 kilos. That was their request. (laughs) Yes. Wow. To try and get more work. Yes. Mm. So if you'd like to be uh, a successful model, if you want to take this seriously, uh, you'll need to lose 10 kilos uh, immediately. So I went on a diet, a vast, a very, very strict diet from that point. Every day I was weighing myself. Uh, There were litres of Diet Coke that were drank. Salads, I remember one afternoon, I'd have this very small breakfast one afternoon saying, I'm really, my stomach hurts. I feel really, really hungry and walking through the city and there's, and there's restaurants and cafes and bars everywhere. And I said, oh, can we grab 
stop and grab a, you know, something to eat. My stomach's um, grumbling. And, uh, and he said, my agent said, no, no, that's your stomach shrinking. That's what we want. Mm-hmm. Just, just breathe through that and you'll be right. Mm. Um, that world, sadly, I actually said goodbye to that world because uh, it was so controlling. And sadly for me, I, uh, even though great parts highlights, sadly there was uh, some pretty, yeah, pretty horrible sort of traumatic things that sort of happened for me in that space, which is, again, what I, what I speak about because, um, you know, we can, oh, judging a book by its cover, you know, as you said, oh, just into your attractive woman and we only sort of get bullied when we look like this but Mm. you know everyone has a story everyone has such a powerful such a journey and we all have struggles we all have self-doubt and and really really hard times and I think I love normalizing going you know what we're human it doesn't matter what you look like who you are what background what education um we're human and I'm just going to normalize this and this is my story and I've had really really dark times and um, great times, but really dark times and struggles with mental health. And I love talking about it to reduce that stigma, especially. So when you say that you're talking about it, so we should go on to the next part. So you've kind of um, been dedicating your life and every spare moment uh, in touring around schools and various associations, trying to tell your story and help young girls. Um, Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, what's the essence of your program? Yeah, so look, it's it's actually it's it's to create awareness for one, but to know that I actually don't want anyone to go through what I went through, Mm -hmm. the the pain and suffering that I feel that I went through. I I just want to share that story. I know that you can look a certain way and go, wow. I want to talk about everything I've been through because there is there is so much that struggle and that self esteem, those relationships, uh, the bullying, um, and so in the classroom, I, I I speak about yeah going back to school, what I was how how I was treated, but sadly one of the things I didn't do was actually tell mum and dad how much I was struggling at school, so I kept it all silent. I didn't want to. Uh, you know, um, what's the word sort of to to you didn't want to worry them or disappoint them? I didn't want to worry them, I didn't want to disappoint them. So I used to come home from school, mum would say, How was school, Jacinta? Yep, it was fine, great, gonna go in my room and do some homework. I'd close my door, go into like sort of like a prayer position, didn't know if God existed back then, you know, in, in, in high school and against my bed, and I would pray that the bullies would stop bullying me. When you're in a classroom, an intimate space, within 20 seconds, I can pick the bullies like that yeah, because their complete demeanour, their body language, and they actually can't look at me Mm. because just this sort of sick feeling has come over their face. I've got girls that are, um, that will go emotional. There's teachers, principals that are emotional. So it's a very powerful space when you're in that space and talking about something so raw, so genuine and a lived experience, um, it's, it's, it's a very euphoric feeling, you know, to get, to get breakthroughs in the classroom. Cause I wish someone like me in high school had come and gone, you know what, you're struggling, tell someone you're mm-hmm. being bullied, you're being not treated fairly. Please have the courage and tell someone if it's not mum, it's a teacher, it's a sister, it's an aunt, it's a brother, it's a whoever it is. Please. It really seems like such a simple message, doesn't it? But there is so many, um, tragically, so many people who um, do take their own lives and their parents are left bewildered because they never knew how bad things were. Yeah. And yeah. I think with um, social media, that is it's just all new territory as well. Because... Well, the bullying doesn't stop at, you know, 3.30 in the afternoon, does it? Exactly. It continues late into the night. Now, kids have access to you, you know, around the clock via your 
whether it be Facebook, social media, yeah. gaming, you know, yeah. online gaming, yeah. it just, it's, it's kind of, it doesn't, sh it, 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 the door never closes. You never now can isolate yourself from it because no matter what platform or what mm. social interactivity you're into, um, they can continue their, their barrage. And no doubt you sort of sit down in front of those classes and you're, trying to empower those that are, are being bullied and disempower those that are doing the bullying, mm. you know, which is, which is, which is great because you're dealing probably with both ends of, of the problem. Yeah. But do you, how much do you think your life would have been different had you been able to find the words to tell your parents that what you were enduring? Do you think it might have prevented you going down different paths later in life or being susceptible to to further cases of abuse, whether it be from partners or those within the modelling industry? Uh, I do agree. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's, that's quite a, uh, it's a, a loaded question. I, 100%. Hmm. And I actually daily, you know, not weekly, but daily actually have to forgive myself, forgive myself and still the, the mental health struggles I have today so I still you know my anxiety and depression will come at um I can be kind of doing great and I, I get a trigger and something will kind of set me uh set me back so that that trauma trigger response um but I I think if I would have said something to mum and dad changing schools really would have been beneficial I did know other girls at other schools that I kind of would have gone, no, because I know her and she gives me a hard time too. And, oh, do I want to go to that school because, oh, I know X, Y, Z. And and I think or seeing a counsellor or a psychologist at a, as a teenager mm -hmm. to go, you know what, Jacinta, you're actually okay. You're perfect as you are. There's nothing wrong with your height. There's nothing wrong with with you and just build that confidence and that self-love and that self-worth uh, exactly as you are, the decisions I would have made in life as a teen in my early 20s, drastically different. Mm. Mm. Have you managed to resolve that with your earlier, younger self? Like do you, do you sort of visualise and go back and picture yourself at that age and and give yourself a big hug or do you have words with that younger version of yourself? What do you, what do you do? What's your process? Yeah. Nice, nice question, Grant. So that's, so inner, inner child work. Uh, so uh, therapy, quite, quite renowned therapy um, is, is to go within and, and to love and nurture our inner child. And we all have one, mm. you know, we all as, as, as being, little ones, we all have that inside. And I, I've done a lot of visualization and even in, in therapy and psychology uh, sessions and just seeing myself and just embracing and just actually saying to, to little Jacinta, you're safe and it's going to be okay. You're loved, you're safe. I love you and it's going to be okay. Mm. And just nurture because because she's just so frightened inside. And I think even even as adults, you know, when we sort of go through a bit of anxiety and things and uncertainty, it's almost like our inner child's just, mm -hmm. we're not feeling safe inside. Mm. You know, much, of, much of our operating system comes from that earlier years of development, right? Mm. So our, our in, in much like you buy a Mac, it comes with a, a predetermined operating system. Our mm. operating system is developed from a very early age and we'll continue to run on that operating system right through adulthood. So, uh, adulthood. so some of our core memories, um, our key personality traits are all developed and they stick with us. And even though if they might not serve us well, it's still a very hardwired part of our programming. So obviously when you say you're adult in adulthood, your anxiety is triggered, you're right. It's going back to that little version of you and letting you know you're safe and that can often then disarm you know, some, some of that negative programming that happens again in adulthood. It's such, I'm only just trying to learn a little bit about it myself and we're all on our own, own little journey. But, you know, the one, the one thing that's hard is, is that, you know, you learn this later in life and I wish I knew it as a kid. It's that good people get targeted by bad people because bad people can take advantage of your goodness. They see it as a weakness 
and and yes they might be going through some things that mean that's the way they are but good people just get targeted mm -hmm. and it's it's such a shame and if you don't have the tools or the language to understand what that is at a young age then you are susceptible to lifelong abuse and i'm so glad that you're going around and letting everyone know that there are tools and there are answers and there is a vocabulary around what you're going through and you should say it out loud because that's how you take the power back it's mm -hmm. it's such cool stuff yeah yeah thank you and look even you know grant and Shezzy, you know your your children as they you know will will grow up and grow up you know what what they'll be i suppose subject to or or open to and wanting to have open communications with them mm. you know is is so important you know, to see just a child happy and loved and just, I suppose, you know, free in life, you know, being, being a child and just, and just enjoying, enjoying life um, is, is so, is, is so important. Um, but, yeah, when, Grant, you, you touched on finishing school, you know, 3.30, that was actually my safe space. So from 20 past 3 to 8.45, mm -hmm. uh, they couldn't attack me. They couldn't touch mm -hmm. me. They couldn't find me. They couldn't call me. They couldn't text me. They couldn't email me. Uh, I was safe. That's that. That's no longer. Mm. School is school is quite different now, and mm. um, not all not all bad. Of course, social media, of course, is 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 amazing. There's some incredible, powerful um, content out there. But yeah, that stigma and awareness and. And I tell you, and I, I've been, whether it's past relationships or things and that, that even have, have told me, even a, uh, I had a mental health nurse, if I can say, actually say to me, Jacinta, uh, you, you won't be presenting. Like, I can't see you doing that. You know, like you can't even put one sentence together. This was uh, in hospital when I had some, uh, some time out. I was quite mentally unwell after Sydney. And I just thought, how dare you, one, this is a mental health professional, two, to completely obliterate me even more than I already was and to go, you know what, I'm just going to keep going mm. and just go as big and as strong and as, and, and yeah. So like today I'm just, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm really so grateful. I think that's probably really um, helpful and very powerful too for the young girls and the, the children that you speak to because they can see you. You've got a wealth of experience in the modelling industry, also in, as you said, you know, some fairly toxic relationships. Um, and I think a lot of young kids aspire to uh, be on TV, be a model, be in a magazine because at the moment – Everyone wants to be famous. All the kids that we speak to, they all want to know what is the fastest route to become, yeah. you know, an international. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think that speaking with you and hearing you tell them some of the ugly truths about what they, you know, think is this ideal life would be yeah. extremely powerful and you're very generous for sharing your time um, and no doubt a lot of your um, resources and finances to be able to get those messages out. What yeah. have you ever kind of been sat on your butt, you know, with with some questions or, or um, has anybody ever pulled you aside and given you, you know, a very personal story that really shook you to the core? I yeah, I, I have, Jez. I um look sometimes if um if they're brave enough to put their hand up in the middle of a, of my presentation and speak it out. And actually one, one girl back in Aubrey, I did a presentation and she was really struggling with it. And this was, this is year nine. So this is really vulnerable. This is really brave. This is really scary to sit up in front of your, of your peers and actually speak out. Mm. She was saying she actually she broke down in front of the teachers and the, and the huge big uh, classroom, and then she said, "She said to you, know, I'm I'm struggling so much with my with my self esteem, my confidence, 
my courage and just crying, crying, and then saying that how she'd started uh, boxing, like kickboxing, so, so starting a new a new sport and how much stronger, how much more confident and sort of finding herself again. And, um, and everyone stood up and just gave her the most massive round of applause oh and my. teachers are crying and she's just, and they're all just, gr- gr- you know, just grabbed her, gave her the most amazing hug. And I'm just like, oh, this is, this is just euphoric. Yeah. The only word I can use, and I've got goosebumps um, mm. yeah, talking about it now, um, is is just is just one. I also get messages maybe afterwards, so they'll find me, you know, through mm-hmm. just another girl through through Instagram. They'll actually uh, say to me, uh, you know, just I didn't have the courage to come and speak to you whilst you were whilst you were in, you know, at our classroom, but uh, you've made me go and see you know, a counsellor again, you've made me realise, you know, how much I am struggling and I'm going to go start therapy again, going to go see a psychologist. You know, I thought there was no hope. Um, so it's it's amazing. Mm. So, You're doing so well. You. you really, yeah. you, you are. And I'm so glad that we could get you on. So how can people find, how can they find you so that they can try and get you to come to their school? Um, give yourself a massive plug. Yeah, so through through just another girl project.com.au. Uh, it's my website there, and you'll find me through Instagram and Facebook and TikTok, just another girl project. Uh, and yeah, you can send an email and and uh, I'll be ready and raring to go. I uh, also have a bit, little bit of extra excitement in the pipelines, going to be doing some training, so some teacher training. Uh, for through m2t solutions.com.au and going to be doing some uh, some rto training so victims of domestic violence a certificate to in business going to be uh, getting women into the workplace again so survivors of domestic violence Mm, that's uh that i can imagine that that would be really um really it's really important but very very sad there's some really sad tragic story can i ask a question and i don't know if, if i'm right but it, it sounds like when you were describing your relationships previously and correct me if i'm wrong that you you discovered that there was a pattern to mm. the relationships that you were finding yourself in yes and grant sometimes i think i oh, one well i had a I had a um a marriage that lasted 10 months. So by the time I was 25, I was, uh, I was divorced. Uh, so that came with its own pretty hard struggles and, and, and battles, I can tell you. But uh, what we learn from that coming, coming out is I think how damaging relationships psychologically, I think, uh, control. So a lot is um, just trying to make me much smaller and like you know I'm quite an extrovert I I love people I love interaction I love engaging Mm -hmm. and I get my energy off other people and it was just this like just trying to dim my light constantly uh so just and I think these these men just insecurities of these men that just constantly you know it's it's your fault it's never my fault narcissism I didn't know what that was. My gosh, do I now? You know the relationships in 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 that. So it's really checking in and going, wow, what? Actually, how was that guy or you know woman? If you're a, a gentleman in a in that relationship, how how are they treating me? What? How are they speaking to me? How, were they were they nurturing, loving, caring, kind, giving, supportive? Yes, we all argue. Absolutely. We're human. That's natural. We're human beings. That's a, that's a thing. We're all so different. But I found, I think, great, just, just neg- negative, that, that mental psychological control and abuse mm-hmm. was just this cycle that it, it didn't start at the beginning and then it kind of just, I don't know, it, it, but I didn't have that, hey, stop, don't, you can't speak to me like that. 
Mm. or maybe on the odd occasion, but it's something that you go, actually, I don't deserve this. I Mm. deserve more respect. I deserve love. I deserve, uh, you know, your, your, your support. I'm, I'm out of here. And I didn't have that confidence to go, actually, hang on, stop. This isn't right. I'm, I'm out of here. Because mm. I'm sure sometimes um, being does in... Does that make sense? Yes, mm. it does. Yeah, being in relationships, things can evolve very slowly. Everyone can start out with best intentions and be on their yes. best behaviour and showing the best yes. version of themselves. Yes. And then they either kind of they return to who they really are or they just evolve into a different person and, and become, and when it happens slowly over a long period of time, you don't, I'm sure, realise potentially how bad it's got because it's kind of that slow drip. It's the frog in the boiling pot The frog pot in the boiling analogy. pot, yes, yeah, mm-hmm. scenario. But when when did you get the breakthrough? When did, when, what was the, what was the moment when it all changed? Oh, just, I think, Grant, from just from having uh, just professional, that sort of that professional help and, and being around the right people, losing so many friendships. So you come out of relationships. The people that I've lost, oh, my gosh, that I thought were friends, catch up, <laughs> you know, mm. long, long gone. Um, but just this this inner belief going, you know what, I have I have powerful work to do here. I am... I am amazing, I am enough, and it's just that constant, I think really that, that inner work and knowing that um, this, this passion of mine, I have, I have more to give in life through, through what I've been through. Um, I just have to keep rising. And if I'm having a hard time or a hard day, I know this will pass. This will pass. We all have crap times. We all have shitty times. Mm. And this will pass. And even now, you know, when I do have that bit of struggle, it's okay, Jacinta. You're on the journey. This will yeah. pass. You're much You've more gentle with yourself, and I think that it's when you are, yes. yeah, when you're more patient with yourself and you have done the inner work, I think then you are a lot. You can recognize the bad behaviors in other people and um, try not to take it personally and internalize it a lot, and have the guts and the the self-belief to say, you know what, this is not working out for me. You're not treating me as well as what I need to be treated and what I deserve. I'm choking up about this now. Why are you reflecting on our relationship? Is that why? Is that what's <laughs> happening here? No, it's just I just yeah, I just think about there's so many sad stories mm. of people who never get out of that cycle and and unfortunately I think when you you develop this I am not enough when you are quite young because of various things, then you you do often stumble into, um, you know, eating disorders or you do stumble into um, extreme behaviours or toxic relationships because you you don't value who you are and your own flaws and your... And, uh, yeah, no, yeah. no, I agree. Sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to... In- um, trying to cut you off, but I think that's what makes your story quite remarkable, right? Mm. Because you're you're very honest and open about the early stages, the middle stages. You went on to become a model. Most people don't think bu- bullied people become models. Mm. Um, you know yeah. what I mean? They normally the the short kid in class, the more rotund kid in class, the mm. maybe the not so smart kid in class. Maybe you got buck teeth. Whatever it is that you got going on, we don't yeah. think those people become models, right? And then your point is, it doesn't discriminate. It can pick anyone. Mm. And people to this day also look at someone, you know, like myself and go, well, you're successful. Clearly, you, you've got it all together. And no, my self talk is horrendous. I have to continually work on my confidence. It is exceptionally low. And you were talking about telling yourself, I, I am lovable, I am kind, I deserve this, I am worthy. Saying those words to myself, I try and do them most nights um, and it is hard. It's like chewing glass. It's like I don't even believe it myself but I. it's so important to do it because I couldn't even look myself in the mirror and say I love you. I couldn't even look in my own eyes and go I love you. It's It's been an incredibly hard journey but I've realised the importance of it and clearly you have too. Yeah, no, Grant. That's um. Thank you for your for your honesty. I really I really appreciate that. Um, I oh, I think you know I. It also normalising. You know, I think even just I can really appreciate hearing that 
from you and it's, it's it's you're saying it's hard but I'm going wow they they're all just humans we all we all struggle we all have like you're saying you know I've got to try and say these things I'm I'm worthy I'm enough I'm amazing I'm confident I'm lovable I love you and actually mm. getting in that mirror the work I've actually done in the mirror so damn hard mm. yeah in the mirror and just saying I love you so much I accept you. I love you exactly as you are. Whatever's going on or whatever you're thinking, feeling, looking, acting, being, you're enough. We're not broken. We don't need fixing. Mm. You're mm. you're enough. You know, and it's it's um it's tough. Gratitude. Sometimes, you know, I remember my sister some nights I'd be sort of crying myself to bed when when I had some some really dark times. And she's saying, Jacinta, just tell me what you're grateful for right now. And mm. I said that I, I have a bed and I'm with my sister and she's just caring for me and she's just loving me and holding space. And that there was there was nothing else, you know, sort of I wasn't working or didn't have a home, but that was everything in that moment, gratitude of having a bed in a room with my sister. So there's always something to be grateful for. Mm-hmm. Mm. can be very hard when we're in that negative mindset because I want to be this. When I have this, then life's perfect. When I have more of this, then life's perfect. When the children do this, then life's perfect. Mm. No, it it doesn't work like that. Mm. Let's be grateful right now. Let's be appreciative right now, whatever you do or don't have or what you're working towards or what you thought was going to come quicker or whatever. Kind of drop it because that pressure also just adds negative. You're not doing it quick enough. You're not doing it quick enough. Why haven't you got there yet, if that makes yeah. sense? Yeah, living yeah, in regret same. for the past and fear of the future is a terrible way to scramble your brain and emotions. And you're right, sure. that's, that's, that's a brilliant yeah. technique to kind of get yourself out of that where you go, okay, let's focus on today. What Three things I'm happy for today. I try and do that as an exercise at nighttime in my own mind as well. Three, ten, three things that I'm grateful for today. Oh, oh, man, how good was it when we sat outside and we saw that sunset? Bang. Mm. I had healthy food today too. Excellent. What? I laughed at lunchtime. That was awesome. Bang. And then all of a sudden you, you've got the, you've got control of the day back again and your, and your brain and your emotions and your heart are focused on positive yep. things rather than really dwelling and niggling on the negative things that may or may not have happened to you. Now I still, I can't do them out loud, even though, you know, I, I sleep next to this one. I still, I'm so embarrassed to, to be to ever say it out loud. I've never said it out loud. She's only just learning now. I'll do it in my head. No, I know. <laughs> I know because I can see your concentration face. Or I tell you when. Okay, it's time to stop talking, I Cheryl. I need to do my exercises. I love that. Um, yeah. But it, yeah, it is. They're they're just. Have you ever found empathy for? I don't want to say abusers because I don't know your situation well enough. But um, bullies, bad relationships. Have you be, ever been able to flip that coin? So in what way, Grant? Sorry, can you just? Ends in finding empathy for those that were bad to you. Like for, forgiveness? Forgiveness yeah. and walk, yeah. Mm, so I probably, what, six or seven years ago now, I actually bumped into my main bully at school. Oh. Um, at, love that voice, you two. Oh, you're both at the same time. Love it, love it. I My heart rate just went through the roof. I thought, wow, this is, this is 20 years later or something 15 years later and this guy's still... And I'm going, and I actually sat with it. I went, well, I was actually, I was working at the time. He was attending a wedding that I was working at. And I, uh, and I went, wow, what is that? Because this such a strong emotion came over me. And my, I tried to sort of get out of the head and my heart saying, Jacinta, you need to speak to him. You know, he lived out of town. Apparently you need, you need to speak to him. And it's funny, I, I, when I went out from around the bar and I went up to him and I said, hi, how are you going? Oh, Jacinta, how are you? I said, oh, can we just, um, when you get a moment, get a chance, can we just um, have a chat about school? And he's like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, what would you remember about school? Yeah, no probs. 
And of course, he's about probably here on me now because, of course, I've grown, <laughs> I've grown more. So under under shoulder height, yep. Since uh, since high school, and I just uh, I looked down on him, and I he's because he said that's right. What you know, you wouldn't remember anything, and I I looked down on him, and I said, actually, I remember everything. With that, it's almost like a little puppy dog. It's almost like if his ears could have gone down and tail under his bum, just this, his demeanour changed. I said, chat to you later. Look forward to it. <laughs> Went into private room in the, uh, in the bar. I was like, hey, tell me, what's happening? Let's have a chat. And I just sat down and I said, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to call him Tim for, for his sake. I said... Tim, I want to know why you were such an asshole to not only me but to so many of us in our year at school. I said, did you get off um, enjoying seeing people in pain, enjoying seeing people crying, so upset, so unhappy? I said, like, what's wrong with you? I said, I want to know, you know, I was just, and I had this, like, I was just, I was so fired up, but I felt so confident. Like I felt empowered in this space. Mm. I'm like, tell me, I said, giant, big foot, storf, you know, my curly hair, just the works. I rattled everything off. And I said, tell me why I want to know now. Like I just went to down. It was, it was, it was amazing. I'm like, you got nowhere to go. Give me the answers. Uh, first of all, he said, Jacinta, I think I'm going to throw up. Oh, he wow. said, I feel so, I feel so sick inside. Um, he said, I had no idea. Actually, I even got teary inside. He said, I had no idea that I had this effect on you. I said, I want to know why. I said, I struggled with confidence for years after school. I couldn't wear heels. I couldn't do this. I went negative, you know, abusive relationships because of you. He And he was always confident, right? He was cocky. He was confident. You never had the courage to ever go, piss off, don't speak to me like that, don't treat me like that. He said to me, so his his parents uh, were separated, so from a, from a young age. He lived with his father and stepmother all of his childhood. And he said, Jacinta, I had the worst, most abusive time at home mm. from his stepmother who didn't celebrate his birthday, showed him no love, didn't accept him, treated him so poorly. What did he come and do at school? Yeah. Mm. Make everyone else's life hell. And the bullies, they say, hurt people, hurt people. Mm. Mm. It's as simple as that. Yeah, they really do, and uh, we believe that's we something that well discussed yeah, with our daughter yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That, that that um that 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 term to try and put things into context. Mm. Yeah, well, you're not a happy person. You're not loving and, and enjoying life when you're bringing someone else down, whether you're a child or whether you're in a relationship. But as as a grown adult, there's mm. something more going on that needs to be unpack there you're not a happy person and what I've I think learned all through that is just people that treat people and I don't I only have a very small amount of uh girlfriends because I just go wow I actually don't need you in my life you choose to treat me like that mm. please don't bring your energy here I actually I actually don't need you it's so, so good like you're able to confront him. him because a lot of people, they don't ever mm. get that oh, opportunity and no. that's very cathartic. So um, Very cathartic. He apologised. He's like, I'm so sorry. Uh, again, in schools I, I share this story and the girls and boys are just, oh, my God, that's amazing. You yeah. spoke to him. <gasps> I can't believe you did that. It must have been so scary. I was like, yes. But I did lots of breathing and I was like, oh, you've got this. Come on. <laughs> Let's oh do God. this. You are an absolute legend. I knew that you would be. We're going to have to let you go now because I know I said we'd keep you for 20 minutes and when it, it, Grant and I oh, love a good chat. So we, uh, we often I can, people I can, over time. 
I can yap with a, a, a mouthful of rocks at the bottom of the ocean and I'll still keep <laughs> Well, we love that about you. We do. Something to be celebrated. Um, okay, everybody will, uh, yeah, look you up and hopefully we can get you a few more school tours and um, who knows, maybe uh, you might come to Bathurst, come and see our daughter's schools. That would be great. We'd love that. Well, thank you so much for giving yeah, us your time. We really you. appreciate it. It's been lovely to chat. And we can't wait to watch you on socials and see how far you go. Um, thank you so much, you two. I really, 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 really appreciate it. George is um, the great man's uh, here. Oh, to join George, us. Coming, nice of you to join us. Coming in with his special guys. mum for being late to work. Hello, buddy. How how good is Jacinta? Um, I just didn't talk through that interview. I just wanted to sit back and really take in the experience of it's all true. Like you weren't actually there, uh, like at all, which is well, you, that's how silent you were. Yeah, no, um, it's a new technique as a producer. I'm um, just sitting back, enjoying the moment. Um, yeah, no, it, um, I thought I'd chime in now though, towards the end of the podcast. That was good. So on our YouTube channel, we had a really cool review about um, the Yowie chat. I can't remember the exact date, but I know it was around the first week of July 2016, around 10 a.m. My husband was driving from the Whit Sundays to Mackay. Then he had his first encounter with a blackie, aka the supposed Black Panther. Ooh. He had to come to a complete stop on the Bruce Highway as it strolled out of the bushes and crossed the road. It paused right in front of our car, not more than 10 metres away, and looked at my husband. My husband swears black and blue. It was longer than the lane he was in. Wow, that's as its monstrous. tail was in the other lane and its head and back were higher than the bonnet of the 2002 Jesus. Toyota Camry he was driving. He says it had an unusually beautiful long but bushy tail, a white chest plate and jet black everywhere else. Wow. His first impression was panther, but it didn't match any of the photos of panthers. We looked no, since. not with a bushy tail and a white chest plate. It was more masculine <laughs> than a standard panther and like the size of a tiger, bigger than any dog he had ever seen. Jesus. The only way he still describes it. Uh, is like it happened yesterday. So he asked me to let you, Grant, know that he has watched your video and believes yours is the same cat but smaller. And when he told his dad what he had seen, it turned out he was not shocked nor surprised as he had himself seen one decades earlier. That's what I'm saying. Along with one of his Vietnam veteran friends. Bloody hell, man. You ask enough people, there's enough seen it. The fact that it was wider than a car lane, like longer than a car lane is wide, is nuts. Yeah, that's big, isn't it? Yeah, bro. Um, What's it bred with if it's got white on its front and it's I a bushy know. tail? I don't know. That's freaky. Maybe it's a Atlanta, a half lion, half panther. <laughs> <laughs> The old Lantha. The, the old Lantha. Lantha. Woo. Um, well, nice of you, nice of you to uh, to join us, George, for the uh, for the goodbyes. Um, yeah, that's what I'm here for. Can I do every podcast like this? <laughs> Just turn up for the goodbyes. <laughs> Poor George. He sent a message saying, um, "I'm here. I'm waiting in your lobby." And I couldn't work out how to um, to let our guest go and how to let you in. But anyway, that's podcasting. Oh, hey. It geez. was a really great chat, guys. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I knew you'd what get a lot out of it. What was your favourite part? Yeah. yeah, what was your favourite part, George? <laughs> the part where she said, hey, I'm just in here and I love hanging out with you guys on the podcast. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Oh, wow. oh you smarty pants. She did say that. Yeah, he actually did get us there. Oh, yeah. Damn it. Yeah. What was a favorite? What was your favorite bit of advice to uh, to young kids who are going through, um, like maybe some suffering from bullying? Punch them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that just reminded me of? You remember when we had George hypnotized? <laughs> yes. Yes, and he said like things that were so not, not George, not George. Well, I've actually like, just come I from like Matt Hale, the hypnotist. Yeah, he's just <laughs> hypnotised me. I like the not George version of George. That was so funny. We <laughs> we get comments all the time about that episode, so we're going to do it again. I've spoken with Matt. We're going to get him on the podcast. He's going uh, to do it to Shezzy. He's going to do it to. He's going to hypnotise oh, me if be I so can be hypnotised. Oh, I'm gonna nervous. Be the greatest thing ever. Because uh, I won't lie. Look, we've had a few people talk to us about this episode. I didn't expect it to be so goddamn amazing. No. I thought, oh, yeah, a bit of fun, whatever. He'll pull, he'll pull out a couple of, you know, the hypnotist equivalent of a card trick. 
but I did not expect what happened. No. Uh, that was just nuts. So I can't wait to have this bloke on again. I don't think I'll be able to match George. Like, George was so good. I feel like... George didn't even know what he was doing. I know. So you don't have to worry. It's just going to happen. It just takes over. It just takes over. You're not performing. It's literally just this experience that you, you can't really explain or describe. Have you resolved um, your harsh critique of your own performance in Jesus Christ Superstar? <laughs> because you're pretty tough on yourself. Like, have you... I still, you I still stand by that. <laughs> Oh, my God. That, it's like your inner thoughts became outer thoughts, and that worries me if I if Very my scary. inner thoughts yeah, become outer <laughs> oh thoughts. My oh, God. my God. Look out, GD. She's yes. going to me a new one. I will. I'll be like, yeah, everything that I've been – because I'm pretty Maybe good at... it should be our grand finale podcast because oh, a lot of things will come out there. It could be the last ever <laughs> It's All True podcast. Yeah, very true. Yeah. It's All Too True. We yeah. might have to change it. <laughs> Change the title. Uh, well, thanks for joining us. Um, hey, mate, that was the best two and a half minutes of your life. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I really peaked. <laughs> oh, it's all true. Be Don't true. Be for this one, George. Oh. Goodbye. It's all true. The podcast with Grant and Shezzy Denya. Bye-bye.